Hi everyone, my name is Kay and I'm the Crochet Fairy. I wanted to take the time today to go over five crochet super tips that I want to share with y'all. I recently put a poll up for my Patreons and my Facebook subscribers with a couple of different ideas for videos and this is the one that they voted on, so here we are today. So some of the tips that I'm gonna give, I did not learn until I have been crocheting for over a decade. I have been crocheting now for 30 years. I feel old. Moving on. All right, first off, you don't need stitch markers. Stitch markers are nice, they're good. I have several different kinds of st stitch markers, so many stitch markers, to be honest, um, but I don't use them. I have them, I don't use them. What I do use is bits of yarn. So I keep my scraps, and then I'll just cut off a piece of yarn that is in a different color than the yarn that I'm working with and I'll just plop it where I need that stitch to be marked. This is basically a free stitch marker and personally I prefer to crochet around a bit of yarn than I do having this little piece of plastic that gets in the way. So I recommend on keeping your scraps. Also you can use these scraps for stuffing when you are working with a macaroni or making a pillow or something. It's very good for that floofiness. Okay, so my next tip is, have you ever had the problem when you are doing your foundation row uh, that the chain is a lot tighter than you meant for it to be? And so the first row kind of curls out a little bit and looks a little weird. I know how to fix that for you. So if you're using a size 4.5 hook, when you do your chain, use a five. Use a five millimeter hook instead. Basically go up a hook size, just one hook size. Do your chain and then go back down to the hook size that the pattern requires and crochet your foundation row with the normal size hook. The larger hook will make it so that your stitches are bigger even if your tension is tight. So this will help with that and it will also uh, not make the first row not be quite as pain in the butt as it usually is. And also over time your tension will get better but if you are a newbie I highly recommend during your chains, use one size hook bigger than the pattern requires, and then drop back down to what the pattern requires. Okay, my next tip, I actually recently uh, discovered this, when I say recently, but within the last year or so. Uh, I have issues keeping up with my rows, and I'll stop and I'll count the rows, and I'm sure many of you have done this as well, where you've gone, you're in the groove, you're not keeping track of how many rows you've gone, you're just going. One way that I keep track of that is I use this. So my friend Bracy got me this, and this is basically a little poppet, but it has numbers on it. So when I finish row one, I just pop it. When I finish row two, I pop it. Three, pop it. And then I just, keep that on my desk and leave it be so I know what row I'm on. I really love this because it's fun, poppets are fun, and uh, well, it's from my friend Bracey, so that's awesome. <laughs> but I highly recommend getting one of those, it's a good, good little thing to have, and when you're crocheting, it doesn't take much, you just have to like, use your little pinky, pop in the row that you're on and then move on, it's not like, having to use an app where you go over and you're like, okay, where am I? Or there I am. Um, you can just pop it, move, and keeps that groove going without you having to get out of it. All right, my next tip and secret that I did not have when I started is the platform that you are currently on. I know, right? YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful source. 
and you should use it for all that it is worth. There are so many videos on here that give step-by-step -step instructions on how to do stitches, how to tie knots, how to do uh, patterns, how, how to do this, how to do that, and there is so many, there are so many different people who describe it in so many different ways that I am sure that there is someone out there who is going to speak the same language that you need uh, when you are being told how to do something. Personally, I'm a visual learner, so I need somebody to actually do it so that I can see it and then I can copy that. Um, and that is another wonderful benefit for, for YouTube. Other people are, you know, they need to hear that, those steps and then they're able to do it. Again, YouTube will, will show that. Um, it is a wonderful blend of putting visual and audible uh, learning and also just, you know, ways that people communicate. Uh, makes it easier for you to be able to learn the stitch that you're trying to learn or the pattern that you're trying to learn. So YouTube, use it, use it, use it. I did not have that when I was learning to crochet. I was also seven, so yeah, I'm all, uh, the theme of this video is K is old. We're gonna move on. <laughs> all right, my last secret tip, and it's not really a secret tip, it's more of a, um, don't get intimidated. Crochet is not an expensive hobby. It can be, it can be. There are really expensive yarns. For example, I have some right here with me. This is hand dyed and it is, uh, I think it's, uh, it's a merino, yep. So this is hand dyed. This is expensive. I bought it because I thought it was beautiful and I don't have many expensive yarns. This is not expensive. This is Red Heart yarn. All right, so this yarn is Merino. It is $6 for this little hank. This little hank is very small. It is going to be more like a sock. So when you buy a skein of yarn at your local Walmart, you are going to be getting more yardage so you can do more with it. Now, this lovely yarn is by Emma. Let's see if I can take the tag off. So this lovely yarn is by Emma's Yarn. It is beautiful. I love it so much. Uh, but this yarn is going to be a bit pricier. Um, this little this little hank was six dollars. It will be pricier than your typical skein of yarn like this. Now this is merino. This is acrylic. The context of the yarn is very different. This is probably enough to make one sock. I have two of these. I'm not quite sure if that's what I'm gonna do with them, but I do have them. This is uh, also a, a bare weight yarn, but here's the thing, okay? This yarn is like $3. You get all of this. You get a lot of yarn. This hook is like $1.50. Okay, do I have more expensive hooks? You betcha, I do. I have some hooks that are quite pricey. But what I'm trying to say is that when you're starting out, this is just fine. You can take $5 and this will make you a hat. This will make you an amigurumi item. This will make you a, a scarf. This is what you need to learn on. This is a good, inexpensive way to determine if you actually love this hobby and uh, skill and if you're going to stick with it for less than $5. After you've been at it for a little while, or hell, even after you've gotten used to it, go 
on, get yourself that expensive pretty yarn. But what it, it doesn't have to be expensive for you to be able to try this out. There are a lot of new hobbies and skills um, and crafts that have a very high startup process. You know, you, resin is going to be expensive. You got to get all this stuff to get started. Um, T-shirt printing, you got to get all this stuff to get started. Um, crochet, you need two things really. You well, three. You need yarn. You need a hook. You need to have a pair of scissors or a knife so that you can cut the yarn. So that is my five little tips. I think I was a bit rambly, but uh, I'm getting more used to this YouTube thing, so stick with me. I'm gonna try to uh, upload twice a week on days to show y'all what I have done over the weekend. And then I'm gonna try to release a new video every Friday that has a little bit more context and a little bit more um, editing personality, things like that. So that's, that's what I've got for y'all today. If you found this helpful, please share it with somebody else. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more and see how I grow as I do this more often, uh, hit the subscribe button. I could, I'd really appreciate it. Um, but for now, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all next time. Bye.